In this video, we will look at the normal distribution and how to use Excel to calculate probabilities and percentiles from this distribution. To illustrate this, we are going to use an example of a semester test. Let's imagine that students had an average mark in this test of 65 and a standard deviation of the mark in the marks would be 6.3%. So you can see in the shorthand notation, we always write it with the variance instead of the standard deviation, but all calculations will be done using standard deviation. This is just the convention for writing the notation. Now, before we start any questions, it's always a good idea to understand visually what you're trying to do. So we know the normal distribution looks like a bell-shaped curve and that the mean of the distribution is exactly in the middle of this curve. So I've added the 65 in here. Now you can use the normal curve to indicate to yourself whether you are giving answers that make any sense. So let's say for instance, um, we look at 65. We know that half of our values will be less than the mean and half of the values will be greater than the mean. So we know when we want to calculate probabilities for continuous distributions, the area between the curve and the horizontal axis is going to be our probability. So that means the area to the left of 65 is 0 0.5, the area to the right of 65 is 0 0.5. So let's think about the number 75. Let's say we're interested in knowing what percentage of students got a mark below 75. So we're going to go to Excel for that. But before we do so, let's just think about what makes sense. Now we know the area to the left of 65 is going to be 0 0.5. So obviously our answer has to be larger than 0 0.5. If we don't get an answer larger than 0 0.5, we know we've made a mistake somewhere. So let's go to Excel. Now first thing I'm going to do is just type out what I'm trying to calculate, just as a reference. And then I'm going to look at my function. So when we do normal probabilities, we are going to have a choice of two functions. So we're either going to need the norm dist function or the norm dot s dot dist function. The inverse functions will come up later in um, the video when we look at percentiles. So the norm dist function we can see from Excel returns the normal distribution for the specified mean and standard deviation. And simply what that means is it's going to give us a normal probability if we specify the mean and the standard deviation. If we look at the norm.s.dist function, it gives us a probability of 2 again, but this time it works with a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1, which is in this case not appropriate. So I'm going to use the norm.dist function. My first argument is always going to be the value that I'm interested in. So that would be the 75. And then we need to add the mean and the standard deviation. So I'm just going to reference these two values that I've already typed. Then I also, don't, if I reference them, I don't need to type them repeatedly and there's less chance of making a mistake. Now, the last argument has to do with whether we want a cumulative probability or something else. Now, when we did the binomial distribution, that something else was just the probability of getting something exactly equal to that first argument that we typed in, in this case 75. But it doesn't work that way for continuous distributions. So for a continuous distribution, to, uh, true still means we are looking at a cumulative probability, but false actually just gives us the y-coordinate for that graph that we've um, drawn, so the bell-shaped curve we would get the y coordinate if we used an x value of 75. So that is definitely not what we're interested in in this case. So when I type in this function and I press enter, I get an answer of 0 0.94378, which means that 94.378% of the students got a mark less than 75, so didn't get a distinction. And that makes sense because if we look at our graph, it, we were expecting an answer above 0 0.5, which is what we got. So that is basically how the normal um, the norm dist function works. The next thing that we might be interested in looking at would be our percentiles. So let's say we're interested in this value A over here. And let's imagine the area to the left of A is something like 0 0.7. 
we want to know what the value of a is. So we're going to go to Excel for this. So basically what we're saying is that the probability that x is less than a is going to be 0 0.7. And we are interested in calculating a. So how we would calculate a is we would use the norm dot inverse function. So again, if we're calculating a, in a percentile for the normal distribution, but it's a standard normal distribution, instead of having to specify that the mean and zero and the variance is one, we can just use the norm dot s inverse function. We are going to use the norm inverse because our mean is not zero and our variance is not one. So we just need to enter our probability first. So in this case, it's 0 0.7 that we're interested in. Our mean is the 65, and our standard deviation is 6.3. And it's again very important to notice that we are typing in standard deviation, not variance. So when we do that, we get an answer of 68.0037. So if we go back to our sketch, an answer here of 68, excuse the writing, point whatever does make sense if we draw it on the sketch um, because 68 should be, our answer should be larger than 65 and it is so that is the basics of um, how to use the norm dist and norm inverse functions it's important to note that excel does not have a function that gives us the area to the right of a point so if we wanted to calculate the probability of giving something larger than 75, then we would have to say 1, 1 because the total area under the curve has to be equal to 1, minus this answer that we got in the first question. So 1 minus that would give us the area to the right of, uh, of 75. If we were interested in... Um, if we told you in the question that we want the value for which 30% of our observations are larger than A, it is basically exactly the same question. And again, we just need to enter the probability to the left of A. So Excel does not deal with probabilities to the right when it comes to the normal distribution.